Hello all, welcome to yet another session on uh, cryptography, network security and cyber law. Today we will begin uh, a new module, module 3 which will uh, focus on topics like key management, authentication, IP security and uh, secure socket layer etc. So for uh, today's session we will uh, be focusing mainly on key management. Uh, the agenda of today's talk includes uh, introducing you to the concepts of key management uh, process and also we will be discussing about uh, the ways in which we can uh, distribute the key, uh, keys between the communicating parties. So this distribution of keys is possible with uh, digital certificates. Within these digital certificates we will be discussing about the various types of certificates that exist and also particularly we will be discussing about uh, X.509 digital certificate format and then also we will see how we can put this digital certificate into uh, working or action. Now at the end of this session you will be able to describe the key management process, you will be able to explain the various types of uh, digital certificates that are available and also you will be able to explain uh, the X.509 digital certificate format. Now moving on with the introduction, we will see what we mean by key management. Um, over here we can see that uh, uh, key management is defined as a process of uh, uh, generation, storage, distribution and backup of keys. By generation we uh, mean to say the computation of keys. Now there are two ways in which keys could be computed based on the type of cryptography. One is, uh, uh, one is a symmetric key cryptography and the other one is asymmetric key cryptography. In case of symmetric key cryptography, usually keys are generated using substitution and permutation method. In case of asymmetric key cryptography, we usually use discrete logarithmic uh, um, approach. Now once the keys are generated, these keys uh, need to be pushed uh, or stored somewhere. Either they, they can be stored cent centrally and then, uh, then we can think of distribution or they can be stored at communicating ends. Now after the storage and uh, generation and storage of the keys, um, the third thing that uh, uh, that uh, matters in key management is the distribution of the keys. How we can securely distribute the keys among the communicating parties is a very uh, a difficult uh, uh, task. Now usually we use the Defi Hellman uh, key exchange method to exchange the keys securely, securely between the communicating parties. And the fourth step that is involved uh, in key management process is the backup of keys. Now the question that arises over here is why do we exactly need backup of keys? The backup of keys is required in order to uh, retrieve if the keys are lost. Let's say if uh, Alice and Bob are communicating and Bob has lost the keys. Alice is encrypting using the secret key that is uh, exchanged between Alice and Bob. Now all the encrypted messages that are received by Bob cannot be decrypted if without the secret key. There should be a way out in which uh, Bob is able to retrieve the lost keys. So hence we need to store, uh, we need to have a backup of the keys that are used by the communicating parties. The question again that arises over here is how exactly we can provide a backup for these particular keys. Now let me change the mode. Now in this section and the sub next, sub next session we will be discussing majorly on management of these public private key pairs. Moving further. Let us try to recall where, where all we uh, use these public private key pairs. Now one is we use the public private key pair for encryption and decryption process. And also we use the public private key, key pair for signature generation and verification. And thirdly we use the public private key pair to achieve authentication. Now in case of encryption and decryption let us say we have Alice and Bob. Alice wants to send a message to Bob using public key cryptography. Now what does Alice do? Alice will take a message M encrypt it using public key of Bob since the public key is available. 
once it encrypts the message using public key of Bob, it sends the in, it sends the cipher text to Bob. Now, on receiving the cipher text, uh, Bob can retrieve the original message M by decrypting this cipher text using using what? Using the private key of Bob. Now, the question that arises over here is, how does Alice get to know Bob's public key? Now, the next question, uh, the next point is, signature generation verification also needs public-private key pairs. Now, how is the signature generated? Let's say Bob wants to send a message to Alice. Now, now let's see over here. Uh, I have just uh, used uh, uh, two uh, di uh, two uh, humans to represent uh, Bob and Alice. Now Bob is a person who wants to send a message to Alice. Now over here he wants to he generates a message M and uh, for that message he generates a signature S and both together he sends along with his public key to Alice. Now the question that arises is this this signature that is generated by Bob uses Bob's private key. Now over here on receiving the um, message along with the signature from Bob, Alice again generates the signature for this particular received message. If both the signatures are found to be equal, then we say that the verification is successful. Now Alice, in order to generate this uh, signature and perform the verification requires Bob's public key. Now over here in the second uh, second uh, signature generation and verification also Alice needs to know Bob's public key. Now the third thing is authentication. Authentication, uh, authentication is a process in which one communicating party is able to verify the authenticity or genuinity of the other communicating party. Over here, in order to verify also, Alice needs to know Bob's public key. Now, over here, all the three scenarios have, have common requirement that is Bob's public key. The question that arises over here is, how does Alice actually get to know Bob's public key? There are three possibilities in uh, three possibilities of Alice getting to know Bob's public key. The first possibility is where Alice is frequently communicating with Bob securely. The assumptions that are involved over here is that Bob has already communicated his public key to Alice in the past and he has communicated it securely. Securely refers to uh, the fact that no other communicating parties or no others in the network are aware of this public key that Bob has exchanged with Alice. Now the next point is what if Bob's private key is compromised? Now, whatever uh, confidential information is exchanged with, with Alice and Bob is also assumed to be compromised if Bob's private key is compromised. Now what if Bob changes his public private key pair? Now when he changes his public private key pair, Bob has to swiftly communicate that information to Alice. But is this communication, uh, uh, swift communication actually feasible? No, it is not feasible. It has its own latencies and delays involved in, in order to reach uh, the actual Alice. Now there is a second possibility wherein uh, uh, we have a centralized directory for storing the public keys. Now, uh, now let's take this scenario which is depicted through a diagram. Over here Alice and BMART are trying to communicate with each other. Alice wants to communicate with B BMART. It is an e-commerce website and there is a directory of public keys that are available. Now Alice wants to securely communicate with BMART. That is the first requirement. The second requirement is Alice needs to request for BMART's public key and it is requesting the centralized directory. 
which is uh, a repository for storing the public keys now this directory once a request is made from alice it will check and re revert back with bmart's public key now the questions there are a lot of issues that come up when you are using a centralized directory in order to maintain all the public keys of various uh, communicating entities now what are those issues now the first question or the first issue that arises is who is actually responsible for storing all the public keys of all entities now there should be some person who will take the responsibility of uh, storing all the public keys of all entities the second issue that rises over here is scalability is this centralized directory actually uh, uh, capable of coping up with the sudden surge in the numbers or sudden surge in the communicating parties or sudden increase in the number of uh, uh, um, users of the network now the third issue that comes uh, over here is the infrastructure support if there is a sudden increase in number of uh, communicating parties is the centralized directory actually capable of holding all these customers now the fourth issue that comes over here is the bottleneck if multiple users or the multiple uh, uh, communicating parties are making for a request for public key of the other communicating party in that case what is the number of uh, requests this server is able to handle at any instance of time now that is again a bottleneck which will induce uh, 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 or introduce concepts of uh, latency or delay now another point that comes over here is non uniqueness of name there could be several persons with same name in such a case uh, if a query is made then who whose credentials the centralized server has to revert back is a big question now other issues that are involved is attacks on a dictionary such as spoofing attack or a dos attack could be possible now how do we combat such attacks is also another issue moving further uh, the what is the third possibility where an alice is able to get to know bob's public key now there is uh, a new concept that is introduced called as trusted third party now alice will receive a document which is signed by this trusted third party which we represent it as c containing bob's public key so a signed document which contains bob's public key is sent to alice this approach also needs a online centralized directory we will explore the third possibility more after the discussion on certificates now in the uh, second topic of today's session which is digital certificates we will uh, first introduce you to different types of uh, uh, certificates and various uh, terminologies involved uh, in these uh, certificates and also we will see x.509 digital certificate format and uh, uh, a digital certificate when it's when it is put into use now over here uh, in uh, certificate types we need to uh, acquaint ourselves with new uh, terms like what we mean by a digital certificate now a digital certificate is a signed document which binds the public key to the identity of a person and this identity of a person can be their name national identification number email postal address or it could be employer details or a combination of some of these now having known that digital certificate is a signed document we will move on to introducing what we mean by certificate authority a certificate authority is a trusted entity on which all the communicating parties trust it is it is responsible for issuing of certificates now what does a certificate contain a certificate contains public key public key of a particular in a particular in a communicating party and this certificate is in the form of a signed document 
now we can see that certificate authority is responsible for issuing a, a signed document uh, which is called as certificate now this uh, responsibility is usually taken uh, by government agencies or banks certificates can be issued to individuals or organizations or servers now the third uh, terminology that we need to know is registration authority there is a difference between certificate authority and the registration authority registration authority is the one who verifies the certificate by demanding more credentials from the applicant now the role of uh, registration authority is usually performed by a bank now we will see all of uh, we will uh, see with an example and get a clear picture of what is the difference between a certificate authority and a registration authority moving further we have two types of certificates one is the basic certificate and the other one is the more trusted certificate the basic certificate is the one in which uh, over here we can see this uh, simple diagram we have alice and a certificate authority now we are aware that certificate authority is the one that issues certificates now alice is requesting the certificate authority for a certificate and uh, for that alice will supply her name her public key and her email id now using these credentials the certificate authority will issue alice public key or a digital certificate the certificate authority over here assumes that the applicant is in the position of uncompromised private key and hence corresponding to the public key which is sent through the email it will issue a, a public key of the requested party now moving further we will see what we mean by more trusted certificate now alice and uh, the certificate authority are having a communication over here the certificate authority first alice is making a request to the certificate authority for uh, some communicating parties public key now for that she supplies her name public key and email id now the certificate authority forwards this request to registration authority now what does the registration authority do it will generate a string and forward it back to alice now this string is encrypted using the public key that is supplied by alice itself because alice is the only person who will be able to decrypt it now the third step is this string is decrypted by alice using her private key and a key is obtained or a string is obtained this string is sent by the uh, alice to certificate authority if the string that is sent by the certificate authority and the string that is received from alice remains same in that case certificate authority will issue the requested certificate to alice over here we can see that a simple or a basic certificate can be used when applications demand less security whereas more trusted certificate can be used when applications demand more security let's move on with the discussion of digital certificate x.509 now over here this digital certificate is an itu standard and it is used for specifying the public key certificates it's a format for specifying public key certificates especially there are various fo uh, fields th that are involved in this particular certificate format the first field that we will be discussing here is certificate serial number and version now what do we mean by the certificate serial number and version the certificate issued by a given certificate authority will have a unique number the certificate serial number is a unique number which is given to every certificate that is issued by the certificate authority and also uh, there is a version number now there are various versions that are possible per version 1 version 2 
and version 3 in this particular X.509 certificates. So even version number is specified. The second field of this X.509 certificate says us about issuer information. Which certificate authority has actually issued the certificate? It provides us with the details of the issuer's um, name, email ID, organization and country. And next is the subject information in the X.509 certificate format. This field says us about the owner of this particular certificate. So this includes the distinguished name of certificate's subject or owner. Now for, let's see an example. A customer is intending to communicate with the e-commerce web server called as bmart. Now let's look at the simple depiction. Customer is trying to communicate with bmart. The customer browser will request for bmart certificate. Now the, the browser at the customer end will request for bmart's certificate because it wants bmart's public key to establish a communication with bmart. The client side software will check whether the common name in bmart certificate tallies with the bmart's domain name. Once the certificate is issued to it, it will check whether there is a common match. Now the other information that could be uh, asked is country's name, state name or organization. All those details can be included. Moving further with the fields of X.509 certificate, we have subjects public key information. Now over here in subjects public key information, the actual public key of the uh, subject and the algorithm that is used to generate this public key is also mentioned. The various public key parameters that are used in order to generate this public key is also specified. And where exactly we will put this particular public private key pair into use can also be specified. For example, if it is used for just signing a message or if it is used for just encrypting a message, that can also be specified. All these uh, information is included in subject public key information field. The next field is the validity field. Now the validity field will tell us the when the certificate will expire. Now in order to tell the validity period, two date fields that specified start date and the end date are given. The start date from when the uh, certificate is valid, the end date from when it start, stands invalid is also specified. That is the period of validity. Next, we have certificate signature and associated signing information. This field is required to verify the authenticity of the certificate, whether it is actually issued by a appropriate certificate authority. For this purpose, this certificate that is issued is signed by the issuer. Along with that, he includes the information or the certificate authority includes the information of the issuer's digital signature and also the algorithm that is used to sign this particular certificate. Now let us have a look at the certificate. Over here, the first field that we discussed is the serial number and the version. The serial number is a unique number that is given to every certificate and versions, there are various versions of X.509. Some of them are version 1, version 2 and version 3. Now the difference between each of these versions is the number of fields or the various fields that are involved in each of these certificates. Now next is the signature algorithm that is used to sign this particular certificate. Issuer information is also uh, uh, provided using this particular field and the validity 
specifies the uh, period for which this particular certificate is valid it is valid from uh, january 1st to 2010 up to december 31st 2010 and then we have the subject information um, uh, that is the information of the person who has requested for the certificate followed by that we have the information on the subject's public key information over here we are specifying the public key algorithm that is used to generate these keys it is the rsa encryption algorithm the rsa public key which is of 1024 bits and the parameters that are involved in generation of this these particular keys that is the modulus value and the exponent value is also specified next we have the uh, signature algorithm the signature alg the actual signature that is used to sign this particular Uh, issued certificate now it is signed with md5 um, using a, a rsa encryption now let's see the next topic called as uh, digital certificate in action now assume that alice and bob wants to communicate with each other alice wants to securely transmit a session key to bob over here what does uh, alice do alice uses bob's public key to encrypt the message and um, uh, encrypt session key using bob's public key now the question that arises over here is how will alice retrieve bob's key now bob's key can be obtained from bob's certificate alice may already have bob certificate or it may send a message to bob for requesting it now over here there are three ways to deal with uh, such a scenario there are number of checks that alice has to make on bob uh, certificate prior to using it now what are those checks that alice has to perform is this actually bob certificate this has to be verified by alice now bob Uh, now alice will check whether the certificate actually contains bob's name but bob's name is uh, uh, is since it is a very common name this field will just not suffice so what does uh, alice do alice will consider more fields in order to verify that this is actually bob's certificate so it could uh, include fields like web page url or email address now the next uh, requirement is alice should check if the certificate is still valid whether there is uh, whether the certificate is still in the validity period has to be checked by alice and how does alice do that since the validity field contains this uh, contains the start date and the end date alice can easily verify whether this particular certificate of pop is still valid now the third a uh, point that uh, alice has to consider is whether the certificate must be signed by a certificate authority or a registration authority so alice should verify the signature contained in the certificate now what does this mean now since the certificate authority issues a certificate that is signed by its private key alice will need certificate authorities public key in order to verify the signature the certificate authorities public key is globally known uh, to everyone or it could be known to a set of uh, communicating entities to which alice and bob belong to now this marks the end of uh, session 1 of module 3 now in this session we discussed about uh, what we mean by key management followed by our discussion on various types of certificates that is the basic certificate and the more trusted certificate and then we also discussed about x.509 certificate and various fields involved in this x.509 certificate then we have discussed what happens when we put a digital certificate into 
a particular action how alice verifies that the mess, uh, that the uh, certificate is act, uh, actually belonging to bob thank you uh, this is end of session 1 of module 3 so in the next session we'll be discussing about public key infrastructure uh, which uh, discusses about the functions of the public key infrastructure uh, with various scenarios thank you